dear colleague uh, greetings from hartkia foundation of india and millennium uh, india education foundation along with uh, we have in association with the vardhman medical college sabdarjang hospital uh, sg smc and kem hospital mumbai mvc mumbai and gla university mathura uh, welcome back in our session now this session is very important and the session importance is did we did a mistake of carrying away with nipa because nipa has come in the country twice and comes from bat and 31st of january when we had covid 19 starting in kerala so everybody thought that it's a kerala problem they have managed nipa they will also manage this the nipa problem they have managed the nipa they will also manage covid 19 and there we did the mistake we did not close our international borders and we we thought that nipa was a routine like in nipa this is much less a condition nipa is much more serious so it will not come to india so i will ask dr rabindra zande an expert on this field to talk about a will nipa come back b are we prepared c if we would have um, acted the whole country the way kerala acted could we have prevented the co to pandemic in epidemic in india ladies and gentlemen i present to you dr rabindra zande ye good afternoon sir so can i share my uh, screen please sir yes you can dakh sahab ho gaya yes sir yes okay i'm sharing my slides yes uh, screening has started yes sir he he is from mumbai veterinary college he is a, a professor and hod of veterinary public health and epidemiology and uh, we have just heard uh, from the uh, uh, human perspective and let's we talk from the veterinary perspective thank you sir uh, first of all i would like to thank uh, dr kk agarwal sir and dr kapoor sir for giving me the opportunity to deliver a talk on this state of nipa to explain beyond the kerala and the surveillance concern so uh, uh, so as you, uh, everybody knows that uh, this nipa virus we have experienced uh, long back in uh, 2018 i had uh, that was the last case we have reported in our country i had uh, uh, so before that uh, in in uh, west bengal there are the two cases and uh, from the there are uh, Came from the as sir told that this one the migratory bird that is a uh, bats mainly and how this Nipah virus has been uh, experienced in our country will just see the what is uh, their uh, uh, outcomes and uh, outbreaks happened and how this came from the uh, bats. So Nipah virus, as you know that it is a viral uh, zoonotic disease mainly caused by the Nipah virus and it is among <laughs> About 40 new diseases, which are mainly emerged in India since 1970s. This virus is mainly belongs to the genus Nipah virus and the family Paramyxoviridae, and this is mainly reservoirs are acting as in the Peroptus uh, bats. These are mainly actually commonly called as a fruit eating species, or popularly known as a flying foxes. Uh, if you see the number of uh, bats which is available in the, in the world uh, across the globe, there are about uh, more than 1,200 uh, different species of the bats, and in India we are harboring about 112 uh, species of the bats. And out of that, the the natural reservoir which mainly uh, uh, mainly uh, responsible for the transmitting the disease from the uh, bat to the human beings or to the animals, uh, there are uh, five different species are there. and uh, these are uh, teropus uh, hypomelanus teropus vampirus uh, synopterus bronchitis and enopterus splee and among this five 
the most important is teropterus gigantus that is also known as a teropterus medius and it is indian flying fox so uh, uh, these are uh, the bats these are mainly affecting the five different hosts including the human beings that is a uh, pigs dog cats and horses also so this uh, main uh, uh, characteristics of this uh, uh, gigantus uh, bats these are mainly active in the in night and the evening times so they fly to the uh, about uh, 9 miles for the feeding areas and they have the no nails to tails and the grayish brown bodies are there so they their range is in the indian subcontinent that is the pakistan india nepal sikkim bhutan burma sri lanka bangladesh and maldives these are the areas where this uh, uh, flying foxes are more prevalent and they are habitant in that particular area so uh, and the behavior of this giant uh, 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 bat these are mainly roost primarily hanging by its feet in the trees in very large uh, in the colonies about 800 to 1000 individuals are there on one one tree and they are also considered uh, uh, one of the pest in fruit growing areas so the damage of fruit from the palm trees so the the origin of this uh, nipa virus is mainly came from the, the country like malaysia where the first incidence of this uh, nipa virus is uh, observed and uh, this is mainly in the pig farms where this farm uh, pigs are reared for the food purposes so it has happened in 1998 99 where in about 2065 uh, to 265 people are affected and they are shown mainly the encephalitis Uh, um symptoms and out of that 265 people 105 people have died so the, this virus uh, having uh, the, the resistance to the uh, different kinds of the conditions which are prevalent in the uh, environment like for example the environmental temperature or the temperature up to the 60 degree centigrade uh, for uh, 60 minutes it inactivates the chemical disinfectants which are mainly uh, active against this virus like 0.1 formalin percent 0.5% household bleach susceptible to the uh, common soaps disinfectants which are mainly used in households the lipid solvent like alcohol and ether that are susceptible and also the chlorine that is a sodium hypochlorite solution so at a percentage of uh, uh, 5 to 10% so th these are the uh, disinfectants mainly commonly used to uh, kill this viruses the uh, this virus is also active um, about uh, in between uh, uh, the ph between the range about 4 to 10 and they also survives for a 24 hours in the fruit bat urine and contaminated fruit juice wherever the people they collect this juice for the human consumption so that is why we need to have uh, sterilize or the pasteurize that juice before consumption so how this uh, virus has emerged in our uh, the country or in the malaysia or in the bangladesh so these are the main emergence is mainly because of the deforestation the severe deforestation people that are doing because of the industrialization mainly in the, in the areas of the peninsula in the malaysia sumatra the indonesia so that is why these bats they are migrated from their main habitat to the human dwelling areas i know also the where the pigs are uh, reared so there and the, the fruit bats uh, now the, what are the trees are there they they stand and they the consumes the fruit and what are the fruits that are falling down they contaminate the pigs uh, uh, grazing on that land so this is the main reason why this uh, how this virus is get emerged and because of that deforestation and the industrialization there is a reduction in the definitely in the habitat of the bats they migrates to the encroachment areas of the flying foxes in the cultivated fruit uh, areas and they causes the contamination of the pig farms and the human dwelling area so there are the three different ways of this the transmission of this nipah virus uh, from the male is uh, from the pig to a uh, uh, person that is the uh, infected pig is uh, there so there is a direct contact the person those who are uh, working in the pig farms they are uh, constantly in touch with the uh, animals so they get the infection second is to person to person person which is uh, infected with the nipa virus and that is the the infection that is called as nozo nosocomial infection so that happens the person the first the public health personnel those who are coming in contact with them infected person so there may be chances of uh, uh, transmission and bat to person 
so bat means bat whenever this bat are coming in contact with the food uh, date palm juices so wherever in the night times they uh, they, they have this land and they just um, contaminate the palm juice wherever they are collecting in the container so there their saliva is dropping in that uh, container and they contaminate the date palm juice and the people they are drinking or uh, consuming that uh, date palm juice uh, raw as such then there will be chances of transmission of this disease so this is a cycle you can uh, very well understand here this uh, you can see that um, the bats those who are having uh, uh, eating the bat uh, uh, fruit juice or the fruit on the trees palm trees and these uh, what are the fruits they are falling down on the uh, ground and wherever these uh, pigs are grazing on that land so they eat these fruits and get contamination and they get disease and once these pigs are slaughtered for the uh, uh, food purposes they are handled by the abattoir workers slaughter mans uh, and the butchers so they may get infection and uh, the disease so the, the global scenario if you see that as i mentioned uh, in malaysia the first case was reported in 1998-99 about uh, 265 persons were hospitalized out of that about 105 deaths were recorded primarily these people are adult males with a swine contact and they, they come in contact with the pigs and in any uh, pig farmings and the animals those who are infected they shows the primary uh, symptoms these are the severe respiratory disease transmitted by the movement of the infected pigs about 1.1 million pigs are killed and they are slaughtered and they are destroyed so there was a, a very economic loss to the farmers there in malaysia and that is why we have to have this do the surveillance and the testing of the animals also for for an uh, accurate uh, estimation of the disease so these are the area you, you can see here the the area which are mainly in, uh, prevalent where this uh, flying foxes are there and they shed uh, these uh, viruses to the urine and also the saliva contaminating the fruit bats and the animals and uh, causing the infection in in the human beings also so these are the harboring areas of the bats where in the hilly areas you can see this uh, bats they uh, hang and they uh, habitated there if this uh, deforestation are done and they just migrate into the these are the uh, pig areas or pig rearing areas and wherever these palm trees are there so they uh, uh, eat these fruits and causes a contamination to the pigs also in same year in 1999 also singapore also they have experienced this uh, nipah virus outbreak where in about 22 zero positive persons about 1.5 percent people uh, they found positive and all were male abattoir workers those who are working in the pig slaughter houses uh out of this 22 zero positive person 12 are uh, symptomatic and 10 are uh, remaining 10 are asymptomatic and only one death was there in uh, singapore but beauty of this uh, outbreak of this uh, malaysia and the singapore is that after 98 99 there was no single case was reported in uh, singapore and malaysia of the nipah viruses but after that in bangladesh and india we have reported first case of the nipah virus in 2001 and uh, this is mainly because of the contamination of this uh, uh, juice uh, palm uh, fruit juice by the bats and then this infection occurs to the human beings but in uh, bangladesh this uh, infection nipah virus outbreak was happened and uh, it is uh, appeared to be annually uh, right from the 2001 to the 2008 uh, 15 the last case was reported there in uh, 2015 Uh, so in, uh, major cases was observed in 2004 that is in bangladesh in faridpur uh, 34 cases was reported out of that 26 uh, deaths were uh, there and the transmission was occurred because of this close contact and exposure to the common source in 2005 bangladesh again uh, tangel uh, where uh, 44 cases uh, were reported and out of that 12 cases a uh, death contaminated mainly because of this palm fruit juice that is the main reason in india also in 2007 again the bangladesh uh, experience is uh, in uh, tarkapur seven cases uh, was uh, reported and uh, uh, three deaths were there and this is mainly the nosocomial infection that is person to person infection and in 2015 also last outbreak was happened where in five cases were reported but uh, if you see the indian scenario uh, we have we have uh, expressed so far about the three evidences of this uh, 
Nipah virus outbreak. In 2001, first case was uh, reported in West Bengal in Siliguri uh, because of this uh, nosocomial transmission, that is hospital acquired uh, contamination occurred. About 66 cases uh, found positive and uh, out of that 45 uh, deaths a day. And uh, 2017, again in West Bengal, then in Nadia district, so the five cases were reported and uh, all cases uh, died and about that is 100% mortality. And that, that is again the nosocomial infection. And, uh, but after 11 years of the gap, so again, we reported the 2018 uh, uh, in Kerala. So that is about 1800 to 1900 kilometer away from this West Bengal. So these cases were uh, reported in Kozikode and the Malapuram uh, districts of the Kerala. About 19 cases of uh, uh, Nipah virus. And out of that, 18 uh, deaths were there. So the thinking about that, after 2007, whatever the cases happened in uh, Siliguri and Nadia, so the NCDC and the WHO, they have given guidelines to containment of this Nipah virus there itself. And they have followed what are the, the and after that, there was no surveillance uh, studies were undertaken in, uh, in West Bengal and also in other states and the neighboring states are there. Thinking that these bats will not migrate for a longer uh, longer distance, or that they, they cannot travel for the long distance, so that that cannot be uh, uh, transmitted to the other areas. But you can see that after 2007, in 2018, we have experienced this Nipah virus about 1800 to 2000 kilometer away from this West Bengal. But that is why that uh, the uh, Indian flying fox they are they are uh, they are traveling longer distance also. So that is why we have to have the surveillance program regularly. So these are the cases we are reported in our uh, uh, globally. So India and the Bangladesh. So 2001, uh, uh, the Siliguri, India, and also the Bangladesh. But after that, the Bangladesh, uh, uh, they have experienced annually, the every year, the, the, there are about 10 or 15 cases or the two cases and, uh, regularly. But in India, there was only three evidences that happened. So this is about the pathogenesis, how the Nipah virus get uh, develops into the animal of the human body. That uh, once that virus get enters, causes a viremia, enters into the vascular system and causes a vasculitis and uh, establishes the diseases. So this is in human being, uh, in that incubation period is about four to 20 days. Uh, they mainly the symptoms, fever, headache, encephalitis, that is a dizziness, drowsiness, vomiting, seizures, and progress to the coma in within uh, 24 to 48 hours. The respiratory difficulty, relapsing neurologic symptoms are mainly commonly seen in human beings. In animals, uh, the, this disease is also synonymous as in the barking pig syndrome or the poor sign respiratory and the insulvatis syndrome. Uh, the pigs, uh, the incubation period is again, it is about uh, seven to uh, 14 days. And they show the highly contagious uh, maybe asymptomatic sometime, uh, acute fever is there, more than 104 degree Fahrenheit. Severe respiratory disease like uh, cough, harsh barking is there in case of the peak. Neurologic changes and the low mortality is there. Uh, there are the, in different age groups of the, uh, and the different uh, kind of the species uh, in the peaks, the different uh, symptoms are seen. In suckling pigs, we have that open mouth breathing because of their difficulty in the breathing so that uh, that piglet, uh, they keep uh, mouth open. Leg weakness with the muscle tremors, the neurological twitches are there because of their immunity system is not well developed. In venous and porkers, those who are mainly used for the slaughtering and uh, for the human food, they show the blood tinged mucus discharge from the nostrils. Muscular spasm is there and the lameness is also there reported. And in the souls and bones, uh, those, those are matured, the sudden death is there, head pressing, tetanus like symptoms, nystamus, and uh, abortions. So these are the cases which are mainly reported. The postmortem bindings in case of pigs, the lung and meningitis, they, they are mainly affected. The majority of the cases showed the mild to severe lung lesions. You can see here in the picture, the meninges uh, showed the generalized congestion and the edema. And the visceral organs are more apparently uh, normal, but they show uh, lesions. Bronchi is saturated with the, for the exudates. 
in case of the dog then the symptoms are mainly like uh, distemper like symptoms are uh, uh, reported in the dogs the fever respiratory distress ocular and nasal discharge in case of the cat fever there is a depression severe respiratory signs are there and in horses there is encephalitis is there the differential diagnosis in the pigs we can compare this uh, the disease um, the nipa virus in uh, with a classical swine fever or the uh, prrs then pseudo rabies swine enzoic uh, pneumonia or porcine pleuropneumonia the samples which are mainly collected for diagnosis of the disease for the serology we can collect uh, blood and uh, collect the serum for the within 24 hours and do the serological test like elisa and other test histopathology immunohistochemistry we can uh, collect the formalin fixed tissues and for the pt um, rt pcr or pcr we can uh, collect the fresh tissues and we can process uh, samples in uh, for the diagnosis the virus isolation we can do by the cell lines using the viral cell lines or the bhk or the rb rk13 uh, cell lines and we can do the tissue samples for the virus isolation virus detection can be but done by the immuno staining serological test we can do the virus uh, neutralization test and elisa and rt pcr is an acceptable method for rapid identification of this virus electron microscopy also we can do and we can do the histopathology of this affected tissues there are laboratories are available for the detection of this nipa virus uh, across the globe the internationally in that csiro's australian animal health laboratory it is uh, uh, in australia they, they, they are also working on this nipa virus second uh, lab is the uh, centers for the disease control and the prevention that is cdc lab in usa they are also uh, doing the nipa virus work and in france that is a laboratory a p4 genes marius lab so they are working on the nipa virus uh, detection and isolation in india we have the two important labs in human side that is the national institute of virology pune they are working on the nipa virus and this in animal sector we have that nisha that the national institute of high security animal disease that is an, uh, previously it was known as a high security animal disease laboratory in bhopal so they do the work on this uh, nipa virus so treatment as you know that uh, as being it is a viral disease there is no specific treatment available so we can do uh, we can use some uh, antiviral drug like uh, ribavirin and also the intensive support care has to be taken by the human uh, beings for the uh, uh, for the transmission prevention control we can do the good biosecurity measures we have to take at uh, every point of the time so in order to containment of the infections and what are the fruit trees plantation is there that has to be removed from the areas where the pigs are kept for the rearing for the human uh, consumption the wire screens we can just adapt wherever the, we can prevent the bats to come in and the contaminate your uh, open sheds in the pig farms so the, that that is mainly done in uh, malaysia and the singapore so that is why there is no single cases are available there run off from the uh, roof should be prevented uh, from entering into the pig pens then the fruits that may have been contaminated by the bat should not be fed to the pigs or the other livestock which are available in our farm the feeding spoiled and the contaminated dead farm sap to the livestock as it sometimes done in the endemic areas also appears to be a dangerous practice of uh, transmission so that has to be prevented in human cases uh, as far as uh, what is the ncdc uh, cdc and the who has given the guidelines that the guidelines we have to strictly follow to control and uh, contain uh, this uh, uh, disease public health education we have to give for the better hygienic practices how to wash their hands how to use a mask how to use hand gloves and other uh, ppe uh, to be for the better prevention an improvement of the personal hygiene is uh, better than the control of the any animal and management and the safety animals those persons which are also uh, working in the pig farms and other animal practices also handling the dogs and cats so how, how how we have to keep the our personal hygiene so that has to be uh, given the training for the people those who are mainly coming in contact as far as the food safety is concerned we have to avoid the consumption of the raw contaminated uh, dead farm that is also called as tadi madi because so that that, that the, we have to see the branded uh, dead farm juices are they are selling okay we, we should not uh, consume that uh, raw one all natural fruits should be washed before eating 
and the horticulture products that are not cooked before consumption like honey gum flowers okay so that has to be tested properly for the contamination and then it has to be uh, consumed in case of the pigs we have to do isolation and quarantine so that we have to keep healthy and the disease animals properly and once that animal is uh, disease free or it is properly treated then we have to mix with the uh, uh, healthy animals then cleaning and disinfection of uh, the equipments which are mainly used for the, uh, the pig, during the pig slaughtering that has to be done with a adequate and approved uh, disinfectant so that we can control the contamination pig rearing area we have to keep free of the palm trees we should not uh, plant the palm trees so that there will be no contamination of the bat and the, the viruses vaccination vaccine uh, as you know that it is uh, not yet available for the nipah virus but the certain uh, uh, companies they are in uh, process of developing sir, this nipah virus uh, vaccine and uh, some of the company they are also recommending some recombinant subunit vaccine formulations which protects against the lethal nipah virus challenges in the cats okay there are some some in some country they are trying alvac uh, canary pox uh, vector nipah f and g vaccine it is also there in some of the uh, using for uh, and considering it is a promising vaccine for swine and potential as a vaccine for the human also but the certain trials has, has not been uh, developed control and eradication we have to uh, prohibit keeping movement and the sale of these pigs and we have to keep the pigs in the properly in the sheltered and uh, covered uh, areas then wherever the diseases are get um, uh, developed in the uh, uh, pigs we have to cull all the pigs again uh, so, uh, same thing has been uh, done in malaysia and the singapore then decontamination of the premises the what are the uh, wherever the pigs are affected and where these sheds are there that that whole area or the mass cleaning and mass uh, decontamination has to be done in order to eliminate that infection from that premises and we have to also uh, do the total ban on the porcine production so for a particular period so then then we have to once it is uh, get all the tests negative then we can start that the pig production facilities over there then uh, national testing and the surveillance program that is very 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 important uh, right from uh, the, the pig rearing the production the slaughtering the product reaches to the consumer in the market so all the surveillance program we have to have conduct for uh, testing uh, that animal uh, the animal food even also it is safe for the human consumption or not then evacuation and the rehabilitation of the villages wherever that uh, uh, because the pigs are reared by this uh, very uh, tribal area people okay so wherever this uh, infections are seen and the pigs are uh, uh, habitant so that area that we have to evacuate all the people are residing over there from the villages and do the mass cleaning disinfection and then only we have to allow to reside there also ban on transporting the pigs within the country whenever there is this kind of the nipah virus has been uh, outbreak has been happened and we have to take the question among the healthcare professionals those who are working as an research investigators or the individuals which are coming in close contact with the pig production purposes so these these people has to be taken more care the surveillance concerns as you know that uh, this uh, earlier the, the researchers or scientists they were thinking that this uh, uh, bat they won't travel for the very long time or a very long uh, distance so that is why the people they were not uh, once that the infection is contaminated or the contained in a particular area and it is uh, um, uh, no no further cases are reported they thinking that uh, the, the no work has to be done on the nipah virus but nowadays this because of the deforestation and uh, industrialization so the pig uh, the bats they are moving from the one place to another and and causing this uh, uh, this is transmission so the, that is why the countries from where this uh, this is are mainly reported at very high risk based on their serological evidence or the molecular detection in terobus bats these are australia bangladesh cambodia china india indonesia then the taiwan and the thailand so then you can see here uh, that these are the indian subcontinent so where in this uh, uh, the shaded areas which are with the different colors are shown these are the areas where this uh, flying foxes are there or the uh, fruit bats are there and they they can having this favorable condition then they can transmit the disease to the 
animal and then to the human beings so that is why we have to have conduct uh, consistently the surveillance and monitoring of this viruses in various species like even also the from the bats from the human beings from the animals like dog cat and the horses but uh, in india uh, the, the current constant uh, on progress towards understanding the epidemiology of the nipah virus in india is mainly because of the dearth of the virologic and the taxonomic studies on the bats because whatever the studies on the virologic and the taxonomic studies on the bats is available it is a century year old uh, information is available so that needs to be uh, developed or that needs to be studied in depth then only we can understand what are the what kind of the viruses which are mainly prevalent in particular bats the india in the contains the different bio regions are there after only kerala outbreak we can understand that this uh, ecology nature of the nipah virus and it is very very wide and it could include the entire distribution of this uh, indian flying foxes their travel across the country okay so the some of the because there are about as i told you that about 112 uh, in the um, bats are there in uh, bat species are there in india and uh, maximum uh, indian bat uh, species are available about 30 to 39 bat species are available in only in uh, bangladesh uh, in west bengal and some of the uh, species are about the 2021 uh, species are available in the north uh, area north eastern areas okay so that is why we have to have uh, conduct the surveillance uh, regularly in order to uh, identify the different species of this uh, bat and their viral cultures identifying the reservoir host and then characterizing the diversity of their viruses and their virus shedding patterns are critical steps in understanding the spill over of the viruses across the country the, therefore the, the transmission of nipah virus from the bat to the humans requires an alignment of the number of the other ecological and epidemiological factors that also we have to consider for the understanding of the surveillance of this uh, viruses so what is the public health uh, uh, significance of the nipah virus the nipah virus is a biological weapon as you know that uh, and the cdc has categorized it is a category c bioterrorism agent and it is emerging pathogens and it is mainly used for the biological weapon potentially it has a very high mor morbidity and the mortality major health impact and aerolization of the potential that is why we have to have that take proper care so of the disease and there is a economic impact is also there once it is affected this uh, pig population then we have to have uh, destroy how the kill all the pigs which are in the production which are mainly used for the human consumption so there will be more economic impact on the uh, slaughter mass and also the from the, the industries social disruptions is also there there is a, always in the fear and the panic amongst the people those who are uh, residing in that particular regions so that is why it is a time to consider the one health concept so we have to always respect the um, health uh, scientists the veterinarians scientists and also the environment so we have to would have uh, work together for the sol solving the common problems of the uh, zoonotic diseases in india so my conclusions are the nipah virus they continues to be the threat as it is a symbiotic zoonosis the bats these are the natural reservoirs and the pigs are the amplifying host is there so terpenes uh, fruit bats frequently contaminate the date palm sap during the collection so that that is why this date palm uh, has to be uh, pasteurized properly and then it has to be sold for the human consumption epidemiological investigations identify the drinking raw date palm sap or the juice as in the principal route of the transmission to the human beings person to person and the nosocomial transmission plays a very significant role in the epidemics of the nipah virus high mortality or the high, high morbidity and the mortality rate in the farm animals and the high fatality rate in the human is very very considered uh, climate changes uh, triggers the onset of the disease and no effective treatment in animals and humans uh, as such available so that is why we have to have take precautions rather than curing the any uh, diseases so concerns for the india is uh, migration of the bat across the kerala border uh, which are carrying the infection into the south india nowadays so that is what uh, about 18 to 1900 km they have traveled and caused it some uh, uh, cases in kerala so that is in kosikode and the malapuram districts 
No studies have been conducted on the pigs and other livestock as involvement in spreading the infection. So that, that has to be targeted. And now this Nishad Bhopal lab is also they're studying on that. Spray pigs in rural and urban areas have been responsible for their unhygienic conditions. So th that has to be done screening because what are the state pigs are available in urban and rural area? They are just wandering and they are um, entering into the human areas and causing the uh, very unhygienic condition. So that has to be prevented and it has to be uh, the local authority has to be taken uh, precautions on that and the strict uh, uh, personal hygiene has to be uh, carried out in the particular area. Similarly, slaughterhouse systems in India need to be a lot of improvement. Okay, so what are the scrapings are slaughtered in the slaughterhouses? We have to take the precautions during this uh, identification of the Nipah virus. South India has a lot of palm trees, palm juice, tadi uh, preparation activities. So they should uh, must uh, take the uh, uh, precautions while making such kind of the juices from the uh, Then the uh, scope for the future work is uh, the environmental factors which uh, makes the virus to sustain. Uh, the, that needs to be uh, studied very, very detailed. The, besides fruit bats, there are other wildlife reservoirs are also there and domestic animals are also there, which carries this infection and uh, transmit to the other species. Maintenance of this virus by reservoir hosts are required to be essentially and scientifically and scientifically and that is why we have to have carried out uh, this surveillance and monitoring uh, uh, studies to understand more the transmission of this virus in environment and the susceptible host. So these are my references and thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir, Dr. Galindra, for a beautiful and lucid presentation on the subject. And uh, this is an important subject. A large number of questions will be there, but we will have questions after the session. Thank I you. would like to close this session.